this dog. Dog brought his rogue first, and Kalento brought a paladin deck this time around. So it does look like um, Miracle Rogue. Edwin Van Cleef. Oh. Did he did, did oh. he choose to bring a Miracle Rogue? I don't know. Uh, well, Doctor Boom and Rogue. Th that's not something I I've expected. All right, so uh, Dog playing something that looks like a Miracle Rogue throws back his entire hand. Kalento playing you know Acolyte of Pain, or Justice Knife Juggler. So we can expect some muster for battle in this matchup. Uh, Paladin coming back in strength since that card has been added to their roster. All right. So Dog, not on the coin, has preparation, eviscerate, double eviscerate in his starting hand. Not exactly the type of hand you want to start with, um, oh, but now that he picked runs. up Edwin Van Cleef, it's not that bad. This it can mean that we'll be seeing a really huge Edwin Van Cleef as soon as possible, but the problem against the Paladin, when you play against the Paladin, is the well, there's always a, a quality lurking in the hand of your opponent, so yeah. uh, developing that Ed Edwin can be a really risky play, but it can also be like a very profitable one. Yeah, against against Paladin, it's a bit riskier because of follow the rules and equality, as you did mention. Like it's pretty tough to actually justify going all in on that. You have to play a little bit slower, and it's one of those classes right now that can allow you to do that. Now uh, we see two bomb lovers in Kalento's hand, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, two bomb lovers in Paladin. That's not something I've seen very often. Well, it's a pure tempo card, so it yeah, might it is. Fit, the, fit the theme of mid-range uh, Paladin here. Yeah, he's definitely going mid-range, and because he still has the coin, Dog feels like he needs to remove those 1-1s. One and uh, it does look like Dog has chosen to bring a bit more of a Violet Teacher Miracle Rogue. Even after Goblins vs. Gnomes and Gaddison Auctioneer's mana cost change, it turns out he still wants to play that deck. How, how much do you think the deck has suffered after GVG, actually? Um, I'm not really sure. The Gadget and Auctioneer for 6 mana is just awful. A lot. I mean, the the, uh, the mana cost changed so much. When you think about Miracle Rogue back in the beta, when uh, Auctioneer was for 5 mana and Conceal was for 0, the change from that point is yeah. just obnoxious. It's incredible, isn't it? Ah. Yeah. 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 Alright, so Dog drops down the Violet Teacher. Gonna contest the board a little bit, which is actually pretty nice, because Violet Teacher will be able to possibly trade with the Zombie Chow, and if the Paladin chooses to play Truth or Champion at any point, it must not feel that great. Two and four drinks, so... Oh, the Bomb Lobber. Oh, wow, the Bomb Lobber doing some work here. It's really unfortunate for Dog, because the second Bomb Lobber can take care of a Gaddison Auctioneer if he chooses yeah. to drop it here. And he does. Mm -hmm. Even if you play a conceal, that wouldn't matter anymore because bomb lover yeah. has this great upside that it can hit minions that can also uh, that are also stuffed. Yeah, it's kind of a problem right now. Kalento also has the Lothab, so he can bomb lob the first gadget sand and Lothab the second one. That's gonna put a huge stop to Dog's aggression with Miracle Rogue. Um, I mean, he can get some health back by killing the zombie Chow, but ultimately. How much pressure can he really pack after two Gaddis Hands are gone? He can't really play it now, can he? No. Without any preparations or backsteps, you're kind of keeping that Gaddis Hands in your hand. And now the problem is, comboing it with anything means you have to wait to turn, turn 8. Yeah. So yeah, I it's think kind of awkward. This... Drop Azure Drake and maybe use second Eviscerate to kill the Bomb Blubber, but this, this sucks really bad. As, are you you, happy as the Bomb about... Blubber. The Bomb Lover has a red, huge value here, so yeah. using another card for that. Yeah, it's already killed your Gaddis for free and established a board presence, a threat that you have to deal with first of all. So, is, are, you, is, are you happy to play Violet Teacher into Edwin here for the 4-4 and the 3-5 body? Yeah, I think it's that's kind of better. Weak, but it, it does contest the board a little bit and you keep your you know card engine for later. That's true. You can always maybe just play Fan of Magic, this is a very weak play. I think that yeah. Edwin here is much better, but still, Edwin at 4 4 is yeah, so I guess fragile to the weapon. But wow, blessing of the kings, man. That is that is going to. Oh <laughs> my god, the unexpected. No one I, expects Spanish Inquisition. No, nobody expects this, the first Blessing of Kings, but I wonder if he plays two of them. I mean, I would be surprised, but he might. Because with Muster for Battle, it gives you a lot more targets, uh, you know, in the immediate That's sense. True. So it's much yeah, more easy yeah. now to get Blessing of Kings off than it was before. Very and true. he kills the Vile Teacher. 
He's probably gonna use his weapon on this one just to make sure he doesn't lose any value. So now you have to practically use the resort if you want yeah. to get rid of that 6 free minion. Yeah, you're gonna get some health back as well. Ooh, Dr. Boom here. In Miracle Rogue, I think it's kind of interesting, but he decides to cycle with Gadget and Auctioneer. I can't fold him for that. I think it makes a lot of sense. Oh. Unfortunately for him, uh, double True Silver Champion. I mean, yeah. This, that's gonna be. Uh, sorry, proceed. No, go ahead. It's fine. I'm just, I'm just wondering what the follow-up is from Dog's perspective, as far as aggression goes. You have to play the Dr. Boom as soon as possible. Yeah, but it can't feel that good. Yeah, for sure. Well, you, you have only one spell power. Oh, here's the second Oh, one. that it's is still, nice. Still, it's kind of not enough. Yeah. And he decides to play Dr. Boom. Alright, so that, that, is, uh, that is pretty sensible. It's going to contest the board a bit and put a little bit of pressure on Kalento um, to deal with this. And right now, I... He's got... No, you don't play Tyrion here. How what do you, you actually... Go What's ahead. the finisher in Rogue's deck? I mean, I, that's what I was wondering. Actually, I was wondering because Doctor Boom is decent enough to you know to whittle down some of the health of the opponent, draw a big removal piece. But we haven't seen anything you know out of the ordinary yet. We you know Violet Teachers for decent combos. Maybe he runs. I mean, Arcane Ragnaros? Golems, Ragnaros. I think I Ragnaros that. might be viable when you play when when you are playing a big creature that is vulnerable to big game hunter. You can actually put something that is even yeah. bigger and then draw the big game hunter first out. Yeah, that's the upside of Dr. Boom, actually, is he, he's the first BGH target, um, and then you can stack more of them afterwards that are not going to get killed by BGH yet. Unless your opponent, you know, you're unfortunate and he runs, you know, two of them, and he wants to have the beast in his sights. Um, but right now, oh, Kalento, how evil of you. Hey, he's got a lot of damage on the board right now. Oh, this is not looking strong. So much damage, and Lothab locking down Dog's turn here. Wow. Completely oh, really locking down Dog's turn. No, the bombs will be crucial. I mean, the randomness yeah, of the bombs will be crucial if you. Yeah, if they get lucky, I mean, he could play Blood Mage Talos with a fan of knives here to help whittle down a bit of the board and, uh, you know, wipe the rest. Yeah. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a tricky moment right now for him. I like he he can wipe the board all right, but what does Kalento do here? If he has Consecration, it's going to be a bit dreadful. Oh, he top decks the Aldor Peacekeeper. <laughs> Ni nicely done here. That, that is a nice top deck. Um, he runs Sabotage. Oh, wow. No way. Nice sab I like Sabotage. I've always loved that card, but it's not the one you expect most people to play. So right now, Sabotage, if, you know, if Tyrion is killed, um, that Ashbringer is gone. Do you wait for Tyrion to use Sabotage, or do you kill the True Silver's second charge? The sabotage is, uh, is not capable of uh, killing Tyrion and and the weapon. Yeah, it's one. It's yeah. one or the other. You'd have to yeah, kill Tyrion yeah. first and then remove the weapon. Um, but he's already used to eviscerate. When you're playing sabotage, why do you ban a class that is using weapons? That's weird. I know. I, I was. I find it odd because I mean I don't know. He's probably running only the one uh, because two of them might be a bit overkill. But it's a pretty good tech yeah, card against Control sure. Warrior, as you said. You know, you can tech Miracle Rogue. To deal with Control Warrior, and I think Sabotage is one of those specific cards that does that super well. Alright, Kalento decides to go for the face here. I believe, unless I'm mistaken. No, he does go for the face and deals 4 damage to Valera. That's a bit... Uh... So, going on full-on aggression here on Dog. Unfortunately for him, Azure Drake and Blood Mage with Fan of Knives will oh, make wow. short work of this board. Oh, and, this is uh... some value here. Yeah, there, there's definitely, there's a lot of, now the rogue could swing back. She's got a sick board, there's no board wipes in Kalento's hand. The problem with Paladin is that you have almost no possibilities when it comes to burst damage, apart from weapons. So you're very limited to a uh, situation where you actually give up your board position and just go face like the last, time, uh, that, uh, last turn from Kalento here. So yeah. he's in a bad spot, a really bad spot. The Acolyte of Pain, actually he can't afford playing the Acolyte of Pain, uh, it's gonna be way too dangerous. Now unfortunately for him, uh, the Sap is going to delay the ability of Tyrion to actually control the board by at least one turn. And the SI7 Agent and the Backstab can deal with the uh, Shielded Minibot very effectively. Yeah, a little bit problematic here. Indeed, yeah.
That is, uh... Hey, this is really, this is really troublesome for Kalento. He has to replay Tyrion on the following turn, and... Wouldn't you have still sacrificed the Oh yeah, he's that. Yeah, first. Yeah. He, he he's doing it, yes. Oh, a oh, heal Oh, anti-heal bot. I like that. I love this deck card here. Now, Kalento... Okay. Must not be feeling too good about his chances to will down the health of Dog and Zombie Chow. That's no help. <laughs> that's that's a, no awful help. draw. <laughs> not the best. <laughs> All right. So looking at this board, we know that Tyrion Forging can be killed by just using the board or a combination of backstabs, um, and then sabotage would kill the Ashbringer. Yeah, exactly. The, this will be. Uh... Oh, oh, another sap. No. Oh, the plays. Oh. RNG, why art thou so cruel? Oh, this is, this is unfair. Yeah. Alright, Deadly Poison. Deadly Poison with Deadly Poison is ready, and you, you can just go phase and... To play yeah. Blade when there will yeah, be... you play Flurry now for 4. Yeah. I mean, you can sabotage Tyrion if he gets replayed, so... It should, and you can backstab the 1-1 one, one on the options that you need to. I mean, you, do you, he has to replay Tyrion again here, doesn't he? Yep. For sure. As so he does. Option, yeah, just uh, maybe survive, but you had six points of health. There's nine, uh, excuse me, ten, thirteen points of health. Oh, there's the Ragnaros. There's the Ragnaros, as predicted. I like this Merkle Rogue deck. Very, a lot of late game threats. Not something you see very frequently in uh, in Rogue. But that actually brings up the point of you know why ban Control Warrior, right? You, you did bring that up, but it does seem mm -hmm. to be even weirder to me right now. Since I do feel like this deck could have a decent matchup against it, or is it not aggressive enough? I don't know. All right, yeah, sure. that's game. It depends on the also the free drop. Yeah, he picks headlock or warlock rather. I don't know which type, um, but definitely yeah, it's headlock. Uh, there's a mountain giant there and a sun tree protector. It seems to indicate the handlock uh, is definitely going to be the thing. So no paladin, no warrior for Kalento going down, uh, losing the first game, which is really impactful in uh, in any you know series. Best of five, less so than best of three, but losing the first game is always a big deal. All right, you're back. I have visuals on you, Lothar. Yeah, sorry. Awesome. I don't know what's going on. Oh, that's fine. A little bit of a latency problem. All right, so we're looking at Handlock against uh, the interesting Mirko Rogue from Dog. Uh, I'm actually curious to see what else is there. Now, Dr. Boom uh, was seen in Kalento's starting hand, and he, he actually you know, kind of makes sense. This card has been pretty much everywhere, as far as I'm aware. Uh, I've seen the card in just about every single deck nowadays. Dr. Boom is just super high value. That's true. And almost yeah. no one predicted that Dr. Boom will be such a great addition to almost every single deck. Like only Strifeco was talking about it as it's just insane. I, I loved it, but I couldn't I, I couldn't see if you know it made that much sense for every single deck, but now like even Milk or Rogue is including it in the roster just for a <laughs> high you know high damage win condition. Like I couldn't have thought that was the case. So honestly, oh wow, double violet teacher prep sap. I am ready to oh. Th this, this board might be a headache. I am ready oh Colento. Oh he can play Sludge Belcher to, you know, weather down some of the aggression. Um, but it's still a really great spot to be in. You have two valid teachers with no immediate response. Yeah, yeah this is nice. very the, powerful here. The uh, two spells that um, were used for those valid teachers acted like uh, one cold blood, actually. At the moment, yeah, you have four minions on board, so they're kind of split apart. You, they're not. It's not like you have like all your eggs in one basket, right? Like it's one yeah, damage, exactly. one damage. You can use them individually to get as much value out of them as you can. So Kalento drops the Ancient Watcher and the Mountain Giant, trying to stop some of the onslaught um, the, that Dog is putting. The Ancient Watcher will be used uh, for Shadow Flame if needed next turn. Yeah, but do you think Dog will predict that? Because he could still play uh, some kind of interesting, um, you know, Shiv at this rate if he wanted to, to kill a Giant and maybe even trade into the 4-5. Uh, the problem is that doesn't really play around Mortal Coil, so that could be a bit problematic, I'd imagine. You can't really play around Mortal Coil at this point, I think. Yeah, I mean, he if he had it, he would have played on one of the 1-1s, one -ones, perhaps? I don't know. I, I like uh, I like his position, however, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You, yeah, you, oh, the you spells. Have, you have to use the tokens that you're generating each turn, because there are so many of them. You will clog your board just easily with any kind of, of uh, spell you have there. Yep. Oh, I didn't see his weapon, actually, on this on the screen. 
Yeah, no, he had one. Yeah, I didn't see the weapon in his hand. I didn't see him equip it at all. I don't know why. It must have been like a little bit display problem in spectator mode. Um, but the the ancient yeah. watcher is gonna wipe the board here. This is well, almost wipe it. Yeah, there's gonna be like two of one ones. No mortal coil for Kalento. I don't know if he runs them. Do you think that this heavy handlock? Like I've seen pretty much every handlock still run them, but I, I wouldn't doubt that some versions have swapped one out. Like it's not uncommon. Well. Mortal Coils were always the spot that you can actually change in the Warlock deck for something yeah. more powerful. But, uh, well, the meta changed back to two Mortal Coils some time ago. Mm -hmm. And now, when your metagame is really unpredictable, I think more players are inclined to use some more impactful cards instead. Yeah. So you might see actually no Mortal Coils or just one Mortal Coil. It's one of those cards that's been varying a lot as far as its presence in the uh, handlock deck. It's basically mm -hmm. like, you know, sometimes two Siphon Souls used to be the case a while back, and it, it just, it, w it was standard for a while, and then some people tuned those out. They modified it for like a Black Knight. Um, some really awkward you know, cards that have a similar function, but not necessarily the exact same. Yeah, that's true. Now, the problem with um, the Rogue spells here is you can use the shift and eviscerate to kill the ancient watcher to prevent any shenanigans against next turn with maybe a second shadow flame but the problem is when you use a eviscerate for just killing a minion you are robbing yourself from any kind of finisher that yeah is... your reach is much lower you're yeah, right yeah your your reach is really low yeah, because you, you can't use it on the face, because one of the strengths of those spells is that it bypasses taunts, obviously. So the idea is to use them on the enemy's face when he least expects it. But he does have Dr. Boom and Ragnaros in hand, which could be very, very impactful in this, in this moment. Like, they could act as pseudo eviscerates. But as you can tell here, he's hesitating. Does he eviscerate this, yeah. or does he dagger up and trade with one of the Violet Teachers, perhaps? Um, well, I wouldn't eviscerate for sure. I would just... If Go I face. didn't see... Yeah, if I didn't see the uh, hand of the war uh, warlock, I would just leave the ancient watcher there, just go face. Okay. Well, so he shifts the ancient watcher. Yeah. All right. Maybe he should uh, he should actually shift face, but he wanted to draw yeah. first. Understandably, I mean, I can see why he did that. Well, um, if he actually would shift, yeah, if he actually would shift face, then he would have uh, an board to kill the Ancient Watcher because he would play the Thalnos and backstep for free and two minions to... Oh no wait, yeah. no, generated this turn. No, 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 no. There, there would have been no... Uh... They were generated was... this turn with the ship, so never yeah. mind. Oh wow, alright. So he might Shadow have to eviscerate it after all. Yeah. Um, ooh, double eviscerate. I think Dr. Boom gets played here and puts some heavy pressure uh, he did keep the investors for the face, you know, he knows better, we, we we spoke about it, and it did make a lot of sense for him too, so he's got 8 damage in hand for the face directly, and with Ragnaros maybe YOLOing it a little bit, um, that that could do it. Well, you have Over to the take next... into factor that uh, turn 9 is going uh, coming to like really soon. And, yeah, Jaraxxus. Uh, yeah, there might be a Jaraxxus, so you won't be using those eviscerate until you have a sure kill. Yeah, it's very dangerous, and I mean, Kalento can afford to wait a little bit. He does have two other main Farseers, which is actually a card that I've seen a lot of uh, handlock players run, like one anti kill bot instead of two other rings. I've seen a mm -hmm. bit of that, two anti kill bots as well. It, those are cards that have been um, not completely phased out, but have seen a reduction in the amount of, uh, of play they have. <laughs> look, so. look at what's funny now. The bombs can actually be bad for you. If you yeah. hit face twice for, for four, if uh, mm. there won't be any molten giants. And Warlock's hand, this will be really awful. It's a huge drop in potential value for sure. Like, it really depends. I hope they hit the minion for, for Dog, because quite frankly, otherwise, it's gonna be a bit problematic. He got lucky there. That was a... Yeah, that was a pretty nice hit. Really oh, nice. wow. That, that, uh, double deadly poison and two eviscerates. This is just a huge amount of, man, uh, of damage output next turn. Yeah. If he would actually draw into Blade Flurry, that means... Yeah, it's, it's killed from, just hand? from hand. Yeah, it's just that, 18 that's, points damage from hand. It's, that's wow. crazy. Oh, I, I'm actually curious. Blade, what yeah. are you curious about? Uh, because right now, like you, you want to play Jaraxxus to get some health back, but you know you can't. It, it's suicidal, so you <laughs> yeah. kind of have to spam the board with as many possible Ragnaros targets as you can. That's true. Like you have to heal up a little bit to get out of range of the Yolo Rag. You have to play down some taunts, so. He's gonna have to Sun Fury those guys. 
That's going to be a little awkward for him, but... You know, you have to do what you've got to do. Uh, Fan of knives, not... Not the uh, blade flurry, but almost. Are you... Uh, do you do you eviscerate phase once and then... Okay, he could... Uh, oh, wow, actually he could reach for the near guaranteed well, lethal, I believe. You, you Unless I'm mistaken. It. You can risk it because if you hmm. sacrifice your bomb first... Well, yeah, you play backstep first. You play yeah. backstep on Drake, then sacrifice the bomb on whatever. Yeah, and, and then you, whatever see dies. What is the outcome? Yeah. But if you hit face, you can actually get lethal just from eviscerate. But I like think he's free. got it without that even. But I'm not too sure. Upside yeah, down. Yeah, I, I think things crazy. Yeah, the the, the, <laughs> the, the card is upside down is really really confusing as a as a caster. Oh crap! Now, oh, uh, yes. That doesn't matter really right now. But he oh, can yeah. definitely wipe this board pretty much entirely and get a guaranteed lethal systematically here. Right? Yeah. It's like it's right. a fifty fifty. So yeah. he's guaranteed to win now. He's, he's got it. Yeah. There it is. Wow. All right. Upside down thing is really <laughs> messed. Can't really think about the uh, Yeah, seeing lethals without seeing the actual cards very easily. It, I'm too used to playing with the cards upside up. Upside up? Does that even make sense? <laughs> upside, whatever. Played against the shaman, yeah. right? Yeah, you're just happy to get something you can kill a totem with. Alright, Neptulon with Power Mace and Kalento's oh, Hand. That's all. It's not the best start, but at least totems can carry you forward a little bit. And you know that oh, Haunted Keeper hard. top deck. That'll help a little bit for the early game. Quite nice for him here. Um, so, the Power Mace, do you think it's run because of mechs or just because it's a 3 2? It's kind of a pseudo Fiery War Axe. Uh, I have a good idea of pseudo Fiery War Axe here. Yeah, okay. That, that, I could see that being the case, definitely. Um, I don't see the thing is like he doesn't know but there's a sabotage in that in that rogue deck. <laughs> so if there like sabotage forget about it. Like, what? Yeah, there it is. There it is. There's a sabotage. <laughs> it, it came in just now. Um so when that weapon does come out, I mean he might be in inclined to wait for Doomhammer though. Um mm -hmm. you know you, you have to wait for Doomhammer to sabotage or is the metagame so hectic post GVG that you just use it on whatever you see first? <laughs> I think you, like, you can't be greedy unless you're sure that there's a Doom Hammer in your opponent hand. The problem when you're playing against Shaman, but he has a, a really strong tempo build. So yeah. if you don't remove any kind of answers as soon as possible, you might be dead. Yeah, that's true. Um, and we've seen Alex Straza in Dog's deck. Uh, apparently, this reminds wow. me of Tares. You remember Tares Miracle Rogue mm -hmm. uh, a while back was running, yeah, you know. Good. Um, the Alex Straza and I forget a sprint, I believe. So it's, it seems like Dr. Boom made its way instead of sprint, and Rag got added, and they cut some of the more bursty uh, auto attack the face, like Leroy slash Arcane Golems. Mm -hmm. So this is looking a bit similar to that, and I kind of I like that style of Miracle. It really Rogue. reminds me of the early beta when we were playing with anything and anything, yeah, my, yeah. My my like favorite deck apart from Control Hunter was uh, rolled uh, with Ragnaros and Shadow Steps just for being used as a toolbox for Beacon yeah. Hunters, Black Knights, and all those bad crime minions, so... Yeah. Temple Rogue was really fun, actually. Temple Rogue was one of the most fun decks in the history of Hearthstone. And it seems like more and more as time passes, Miracle Rogue is becoming more and more tempo-based, right? It's got a lot more minions in it than it used initially. Initially, the deck was basically pure spells. Um, mm -hmm. All spells and just one Gadzan, uh, two Gadzans, and you, you just carried on the back of it when you found it. Um, and as times cool. passed, it's been Violet Teachers included, uh, a lot of other stuff that was really uh, not in the core design of the deck. It's been kind of That's nice. Very honestly. True. Oh, the problem with the rogue is that he didn't draw any kind of board piece yet, and those those will be the MVPs against Shannon. Yeah, but he's got a Gadatsan coin and double prep uh, and a prep in hand, so there could be like if he goes Gadatsan auction your coin prep sabotage, um, that's a lot of card draw. He could get a blade flurry, which would be very good for him right now. Um, I think Kalento has to kill the. Yeah, you just play the file mental, I think. I would, but I don't know if he'd rather keep it and not lose it to a board wipe. Uh, there's a possibility that he expects. Dog to w to wipe the board very quickly, and he's gonna get a, an extra card draw from the Manatee totem. But now you're even more um, vulnerable yeah. to, to a board kill. Well, it doesn't really matter because Shaman is point. so far ahead. 
At the moment, yes, definitely. And, you know, dogs got to be curious, you know, does this guy run Bloodlust? Because there is a possibility that Bloodlust is run as a one-of in Kalento's deck. We, we don't know that yet. I mean, the decks mm -hmm. haven't been... Like, there's no established metagame just yet. And, you know, Power Mace might indicate, um, you know, a mech or a tempo deck that didn't draw super well, let's say. Mm. Um, so maybe Bloodlust is in that range. Let's talk about the rogue options here. I think mm -hmm. you have, if you play two Blade Fuerers, you have to risk and play Gadget and... and prep i mean gazet and coin you have one draw then prep oh, yeah. the second one and maybe draw into the blade floor because there are so many minions out there and you have yeah like six points of damage here. oh he decides not to do that but there's no fan of knives in his hand either so so what, what... would you play even the trade dude i don't know i'm it feels like he's, he doesn't feel threatened yet. He doesn't feel like he's about to die. So he's going to have to try to eviscerate that flame tongue told him so, as he, like, so he doesn't take too much damage. That mm -hmm. mitigates a lot of damage from the board um, in the immediate sense. But, but it still doesn't still, help him recover. Yeah, it's, it's still 5 damage from the board. And mm -hmm. you know that easily with Semenana, even the worst combination is like flame, uh, Lightning Ball or Rock Biter and an yeah. example, Final Metal. So that's 11 points of damage. We'll be at free and yeah and the kill bot will not save you cool. like you're three turns yeah. away from alex cool. straza so he, he cool. might be feeling a bit uh, a bit safe here because he doesn't expect the burst but then again as you said you know shaman has a lot of reach potential it's one of those things with that deck you know they can lava burst your face out of nowhere and suddenly you're down to nearly no health at all um, but kalento decides to trade again plays a fire elemental he's gonna get some nice card draw here if Shannon actually draws more than two cards from the <laughs> what will I mean? Yeah, it's so pure value. It's already, already over, I think. It's like most, most of the situations are like, oh, I just lost. Shannon yeah, has so the, much value. Does not target. Yep. So it's going to be random here. So do you have to try the Sabotage or the hope for Blade Flurry top decks? Or... Now you have to play the Gazette, but you lost your coin and you have one mana remaining. And I'm oh, the Sabotage. Sure sure. I'm almost sure that uh, Dog is not running any kind of one mana spells. Yeah, now let's see if the RNG favors him. Oh wow, oh no. Oh, he kills a Stone Claw, <laughs> this is Stone devastating. Claws. This is the worst possible outcome. This is the end uh, of the game? No. Uh, not yet, okay. not yet, but not it could yet. be. Like, any kind yeah. of spell that deals two damage or maybe one, so Crackle. Defender of Argus um, will give plus two, so there's seven, eight there, plus Rock Biter, that's a total of you know, 11 damage, he's one off <laughs> lethal, <laughs> again. Plus one. Well, you can try to draw into Crackle. Like, if you play yeah. as a Drake, With Drake, you have still yeah. one mana for the Rock Biter, and if you draw the Crackle, you win. So. Yeah, Im immediately. So that would be... Uh... And you are 26 points of life. If you don't draw the Crackle, you can just kill off the Gazette. And... Yeah, and you, you don't expect any burst from that deck, because we as we've already seen, you know, Dog's deck is very... You know, heavy minions, uh, that's pretty much what he's running most of the time. So you don't expect, you know, Leroy, Shadow Step, or, you know, Arcane Golem, Cold Blood, Cold Blood, Shadow Step, Cold Blood. Like, you, you don't expect any of that stuff. It's just, it's mm -hmm. going to be straight up trying to out tempo you. And right now, as a shaman, you have the tempo. So you're not too worried, I don't think. That's very true. That's how the shaman works. Yep. Now, Dog in a really tricky position. Antique Hillbot could help, but how much, really? Uh, another prep, but get it, Sam. Gadgetan has been uh, silenced. That's awful, man. That's really yeah. awful, and I think the Gadgetan should be, be played early on, but now you Instead just the lost Drake. so much. Yeah, so much tempo is being lost. Even the Sap is a great play right now, even for a... Like the fire a level. <laughs> for the Golem, even. It's like... Yeah, you have to at least remove some stuff on the board. Like, removing two minions is fine. Um, do you... No, you can't. I mean, you'd have to get lucky with your prep shiv to get anything done, right? No, like, if you if you prep shiv, you'd, you'd have you're just to... dead. There's no way you can pull off this game. No, I mean, he's got like Strata for healing purposes, right? Oh, the oh, crackle. Crack. Oh, that's going to hurt. Six, seven, eight. So you this guy's on sure four health, biter, five health. A second weapon. Oh, it's over. It's over. Power mace. Never yeah. mind. What am I Power talking mace about? And the wrong biter. That crackle I, yeah. didn't even matter. Why am I calculating damage? What am I doing here? Yeah, never mind. This game is over. So that was a really nice, uh, nice play here from Kalento. Like, he's using power maces. You know, he's got Harvest Golem, so they can have some value. 
And he takes the third game after all, um, you know, losing his two first decks, Paladin, the exact same amount of mana. It's so like, Dog decides wow. to pick Druid, actually, wow. so uh, that's interesting. Okay. That's very interesting. Maybe he just wants to maybe win with his le uh, with his Wars deck in this matchup, just not to show the mage first. Yeah, if he can't avoid showing the mage, then maybe that's what he wants. Uh, so yeah. if he can win with this one, I mean, he can't afford throwing the deck away, right? It doesn't really matter to him. Uh, maybe it's very standard. Oh, Mech Druid, you've got to be kidding. Wow, that's interesting. That, definitely interesting. I I like that. But Kalento's got a decent starting hand here on curve with Hunt Creepers and Wild Harvest Golems. This is very interesting because we talked that about uh, we talked it um, in Kingwin Invitational. I mean the Kingwin for Charity Tournament. That was the first GBG tournament. Uh, mm -hmm. Mac, Wa Mac Warper fills the same role as the Wild Grove in this Druid. in this type of deck. And you know when you have four Wild Groves in a deck, well that's kind of OP, right? Yeah, well that's been my, my most successful Druid deck, is actually a mech tempo deck that's kind of trying to be a fast Druid. That's one of the decks mm -hmm. I've been having fun with. Uh, I can't tell you that it's like the best deck that I've ever played. Um, but it's definitely been a lot of fun, honestly. And so far, Mech Warper is like another Wild Growth. So I have two Wild Growths, two Mech Warpers, two Innervates, and I, that seems to be definitely what Dog is attempting with this deck, definitely. But Shaman's got a sickening amount of board presence right now. Do you play the Dr. Boom? Uh, oh, that would have been fun. That would have been fun. But, uh... Wait, what happened? Uh, Lo Ancient oh. of Lore was played, right? No, it actually was the Azure Drake. Uh, it's on the right side of the screen. Oh, wow. It's we... Yeah, it's, okay. it's gone. We don't I see it like, properly. What is happening here? Yeah, the Azure Drake is on the very far right. So we're looking at that, and it's... <laughs> Shaman is tempoing pretty hard right now. Got a lot of, uh, oh wow, the Harvest Golem gets buffed up by the Power Mace dying, which buffs a random mech with plus two, plus two. Definitely yeah. a good one here. A Yeti uh, for with Kalento, at least. Wow. That is sick. And now, do you innervate out, you know, the Shredder and the Spider Tank? Yeah, that feels good. Yeah. Dr. Weak. Boom? Uh, awful, to be honest. You have to play Yeah. Boom. I think yeah. both Dr. Boom last turn was so good. Last turn might have been a bit better, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just lost one point of mana because of the innovate this turn. And yeah, any play he had was over, like overpaying basically. Yeah, and well, he had the shredder the turn before that, so he might actually mm -hmm. been planning forward, like turn five and seven drop, then turn six four drop and four drop and three drop yeah. for the hunted creeper. So that might be uh, slightly better, especially when you're playing against a tempo deck like shaman when you need those value cards like the bombs from Dr. Boom as soon as possible to just trade for all the minions. Yeah, before they overwhelm you. Because, he, you know, yeah. Druids have Swipe, but besides Swipe, you know, what really do they have uh, when it comes to clearing boards, right? Nothing. Kalento has a nice Lightning Storm, right? It's, uh, I mean, does, he, does he just Lightning Storm this board ever? Or does he wait oh, uh, since he's in Mech Warper? Yeah, the bomb is really unlucky. Yeah, yeah it doesn't do anything. Face. Yeah, that's yeah, like... Unfortunately. And oh, again... Oh, wow! Okay, well, he's, he's in range. He, he's getting close to the Force of Nature Savage roll range, right? <laughs> it yeah, can't be. It's so awkward, lost, though. Oh, lost. God. The whole turn just to play our 7 7 minion and nothing really Yeah. Happened. And Starfall as you would said, be nice. Yeah, as you said, Druid has only swiped for his AoE control. And mm -hmm. when, you when you're just actually. When your opponent has only minions with 2 HP, you're all in awful position. You have to draw in the Telnos or play Starfall, as you mentioned. Wild Power Mancer. I've seen Wild Power Mancer a long time ago in Druid when you were expecting a lot of aggro, right? But that's mostly, <laughs> uh, it's not something you tag very often. Like, it was the alternative to Blood Mage Thalnos. Um, but Double Swipe is very strong. Like, Double Swipe oh. is a play that you're happy to run when you do get it. Uh, in a situation like this, I think it would be pretty much godly, honestly. Um, but yes. Swipe Hero Power Wrath here actually does a pretty good job of wiping the board. Well, there's still be one minion left, right? Yeah, there will be one thing, but yeah, I mean, if if you leave the zombie chow alive, you can always finish oh, it no, off no, later. Wait. Yeah, we're, we're, and he has uh, he has this hero power still. Mm -hmm. like, first, you wrath one, right? The uh, elemental. Yep, exactly. Right on. So that that's pretty. That's a pretty decent board wipe, quite frankly. Like I'm not. I wouldn't feel too bad about it if I were Dog. It's he's gotten in a position now where he actually has a decent board, uh, but Kalento's next turn is likely to be Neptulon, which is going to give him an entire hand of Murlocs, and uh, those are random, so you never know what you're going to get. 
I don't think she's gonna play it right away. Yeah, it is. This is the first time I've seen that problem in a tournament. So. Oh, it's a great card for Shaman. Alright, what did he get? Two Grimscale or Coals. I see an old Murkai. And something oh, else on the wow. far so right. This is oh, this, oh, God! The card draw! <laughs> oh man, that, that's really... This is Wait. crazy! We don't play any Moonlocks, I think, apart from the Stefan next turn. So... And then, and then you drop two of them with Murkai, and you're just happy to do it. But then again, you're in reach wow. of, you know, Force of Nature, Savage Roar. That, that has to be a little dangerous but here. You can you can kill those minions easily. Yeah, you, you can play, kill them. You kill the uh, Yeti, and then Hex. Hex one, yeah. Very simply. And it gives you a spare part. You can always get something valuable out of it. Maybe yeah. swap back your Neptune onto full health, for whatever reason. Um, or freeze like, kind of That would be okay. Mm -hmm. What did he get? It's a coolant? I'm not sure. Yeah, no, he got Tyrone. Oh, wow. Is he gonna get That's more Murlocs? Actually... Oh, old Murkai, OTK! <laughs> 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 I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> um, that would be nice, so the old Murkai getting incredible value. So He goes with uh, his safer play here because ooh, he's so unlearned he won't swipe, but the keeper of the gold might be better, I don't know. Yeah, that's no, a very nice play here. Two, um, ooh, second keeper. Okay, still lacking the combo. And this is the most important thing. Yeah. But now, how many Plenty's points will the Ormorg Arc will have, actually? Well, you play plus the second... Two, plus, pl plus four. Three. Plus four. It'll be a seven plus, four. Uh, if you play the Stefan too, yeah. And you yeah. can fit those? Yeah, you can fit those. Yeah, you can fit everything. You can fit everything wow. you want. That is an incredible <laughs> Murloc moment. Oh my god, Neptulon. Like, GBG has made some of the most unexpected things uh, happen. I really love I, I can't I, believe like, this. I always... Well, I'm always an um, opponent of any RG cards, but when it comes to the new, new cards for the GBG, are really fun and awesome to watch. So, yeah. I really like the, 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 the new expansion here. Honestly, so far, I think this is a, this is this is definitely RNG done right, as far as I'm concerned. GVG has done that right. Like they've actually yeah. done really nice. Yeah. Like the random numbers, the, the RNG in, in GVG hasn't been, uh, ha you know, like cars like Ragnaros and Animal Companion. You know, those two cars personally, I'm not a big fan of because I think they're a bit too swingy in a way. Um, but the cars that you get from, you know, Neptulon, uh, sure you could get, you know, four old Merc guys, but that's not even good. Like you have to get really specific combinations. To get really the OP RNG, whereas this forces you to play around it. And the Siltfin, admittedly, was arguably one of the better cards that Kalento could have gotten. Um, For sure, it's, and it has five points of health, so uh, yeah. that's the worst kind of minion that can actually be played against a druid. I mean, the the best, because druid has a problem with minions with high health, uh, just because druid has no option to. Like kill a minion regardless of its health points, so he has yeah. the extra deal damage that is being printed on the health of, of the minion. Unless so you're here, using your first dog. Yeah, here dog actually decides to double keeper of the grove, the uh, Siltfin. I, I thought he was going to to you know hero power the one one, then reverse the attack and health of the uh, Siltfin and kill it with the keeper of the grove thing. But he wants to keep the reversing switch probably to get a keeper of the grove swap up to four attack. Uh, okay, to maybe reach for a little case. bit more damage. I think that's what he's trying to do because Double Keeper is probably trying to set up for some kind of damage because he, he considered the reversing switch, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, Crazed Alchemist works like that where if you switch the attack and health, uh, it does it permanently. So even though yeah. the Grimscale Oracle only buffs uh, a, you know, an aura effect, it would translate into um, permanent. Oh, Arcane Nola Fire actually in Kalento's Shaman. It's so nice with Power Maze. Do you think he dropped the uh, wolves? In no, that, uh, on, okay, a long time ago, in the times where alpha and beta were a thing for Hearthstone, the wolves were cut out of every mid-range shaman deck because they overloaded you and denied your ability to tempo very effectively. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely a possibility. It's been, it's like Unbound Elemental and Harvest Golem. People preferring one over the other. It's it's kind of going in and out of fashion. Um, but I've always preferred Harvest Golem, and it seems to be the case that, you know, a lot of people also run their Shamans uh, with Harvest. So, it is a, it is a, is it a call that I'm willing to make, Cutting Wolves in this deck. I, I think it that's might, fine. This might be a very, uh, very good decision in this type of Shaman. Mm -hmm. When you have also Neptune, which also costs Overlord, you don't have to be... You, you can cut cards that can Overlord too, too much. Exactly. Because every single 
draw will mean that you will be off curve and you will suffer from tempo like yeah loss. tempo loss yeah, that's the big yeah. problem with you know overload it's a mechanic that's designed that way where shaman has really nice board presence mind you but the overload is kind of the drawback you have to pay for so you surrender future tempo for immediate one and sometimes when that backfires then you're falling behind way too quickly so cutting the feral spirits can definitely be a good thing especially with spider tanks in the metagame now now, there's a lot of three drops mm -hmm. that kill it for free, and now you lose tempo for that, so it can be kind of problematic. Oh, sure. Alright, Kalento wiping the board. Or trying to, oh, at least. The miss. Low, low, low uh, roll on the Tinker Pound Technician. Uh, if Force of Nature is top decked, is that it? I believe it is. Yeah. If Savage Wars that's are, it's top decked. No, no, no. We did draw the wide draw, so that's not the combo. So there's no, no way of getting lethal this turn. Mm hmm But the, sw the, the the stealth on the Drake could be really, really instrumental. That could be one really nice. Swipe, one rep, right? Yeah, there's two there's one of each left in the deck right now, so um, swipe would would make short work of the current board of the shaman. Quite frankly, it would be very easy for a uh, dog to wipe it. Um, but a lightning storm with a Drake here could definitely change the tides if he rolls high on that Drake. That will be super important, super yeah, it would be a really game maybe game winning it. Yeah, I, I'd go as far as saying it's game winning because he's on 15, just I uh, oh, and the Drake dies. Oh, wow. Right, he's so just on 21. You're right, that not, not, that's not the game winning at all. Oh, he has to go face and hope for the Savage or top deck now. Is that it? Or is he gonna still try to trade? He could kill the Drake and I'm go face sure. for one. I think he could. Well. You didn't see any heal cards from Shaman, so you can actually go face, I think. Yeah, we, we don't expect any of those, alright. 4-7, wow, so that's an, uh, a permanent, permanent... It's at least a board wipe. Yeah, this is yeah, going board. to be... Swipe swipe top deck is actually lethal now for Dog, so his swipe and his Savage Roar are both going to help him win the game, because now his board is gone, so he's relying on whatever he can top deck, and there are no taunts for this turn at least. So he's got maybe one turn because like Kalento worst case scenario he could always hex his own minions to get a pseudo taunt for one turn if, like if he ever needs to get two of those um, at any point so it's uh, really at this point of the game I'm sure there are no spectral oh wow oh the savage roar and no, no spectral knights I don't think uh, uh, wow I wanted to tell about spectral moves for Pulse, yeah. Shannon here because we didn't see them at all for two games and we did see uh, Defender of Argus and yeah, and nullifier, so... Yeah, so there's probably a cut there that was made. Mm -hmm. And if you 